Hey, Seth, how'd your press conference go? Um, Al Jazeera asked me what a U.S. destroyer was doing in Konami waters. And what'd you say? I said trying to get its engine started. <laughs> How very literal of you. Oh, I dropped off the Charlotte Thorne Presser notes on your desk. You dropped those off last night. Really? Oh, well, now you have two copies. Do you want to tell me what's going on? Because I, I find the whole absent-minded professor thing charming, but the big guy won't. I'm supposed to have lunch with my dad. Okay. You've never mentioned him. That's because I haven't seen him in 23 years, not since he walked out on us. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. He got in touch a few weeks ago. He's in town all week for some convention, and I've been putting him off, but he leaves tonight. So what are you going to do? Well, part of me would like to see him so I can plunge a knife into his heart. Yeah, maybe not that. But the other part thinks that if I let him go, then I'll be closing a door on him forever. But the choice is out of my hands. Why? Because 300 of our sailors are trapped in enemy waters. Charlotte Thorne's killer is still on the loose, and the world is, you know, on fire. The world is always on fire. Em, I would never tell you what to do, but don't let this place be an excuse. Flames will still be here when you get back. I moved to Key West for a few years. I had a limo business. I figured, you know, people in paradise, they would be too drunk to drive. Turns out they were all just too drunk to make a phone call. <laughs> I don't remember you being this quiet, Emily. I didn't want to interrupt you while you were telling your life story. It's missing one thing, though. Me. Emily, I am so sorry. I don't need your apology. My mother does. It's not what you think. Really? Because I think you were too busy skiing and getting a tan to be a dad. I left because your mother and I weren't in love. So that's why I never heard from you, because you didn't love my mother. I, I'm not here to make excuses. All I can tell you is that I knew if your mother wasn't in my life, then I couldn't be in yours. You're right. That's, that's not an excuse. That's worse. That is cowardly and pathetic. Emily. Do you know what it's like to be a little girl with a birthday? And you run home from school praying that this is the year your dad sends you a card. And you get home and you check the mail. And no, it's not the year. And there never was a year. Emily, I wanted to reach out to you a thousand times, but I didn't know what to say. How about goodbye? I carried this around for 20 years. Had a little girl from Akron who won a really big spelling bee. I kept it because of the picture, but, well, now that I've finally seen you again, I don't need it anymore. Dad, wait. <laughs> 